Good evening, it's 7 o'clock. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is James Channing. Good evening. Good evening. James Channing, Council for Pride. I'm here. We were here last on October 17th, I believe, with uh, some slight revisions. And at that point, subsequent to that, Tesla came in. So I understand Tesla presented some additional information to you for your consideration. And based upon that, I'm just here to address any other concerns or questions before we present the full sets of plans. Just for clarification purposes, it's my understanding that based on the tentative approval of Tesla, there's a request or the need to add additional five parking spaces which would be behind the, un the loading zone or the unloading zone? Yes. To the northwest side? Yes. I can show yes. you. For yes. Yes. And yes. then, That's correct. subsequent to that, I think there was a, a matter of interpretation or some need for clarification as to the signs, or two parts of, of the signs, one being dealing with the building inspector applying the sign permit, one was the interpretation as to the, the ground sign, and then whether or not the wall signs, if the building was to be treated as a multi-tenant a single tenant and with respect to the ground sign whether it was to be considered as a 64 square foot plus the 16 gas or as a 64 the square foot maximum if it's the ground sign you were allowed 64 square feet and with the bylaws written plus 16 for the gas pot correct where those things are called i believe that was conveyed to the building inspector so right. I, I think that's been resolved in right. terms of not being able to present right. and then in terms of it's my understanding in terms of the interpretation of the zoning it's, it's a single tenant the way your bylaws written. That's correct. And so that obviously will restrict or do the sign plans and, and we'll present that as approved to you back in your October 17th plans. Okay. I don't know if you have any other questions or concerns. Nope, or I got a question on that. Absolutely. The day we approved the change of the sign and and the uh, other things, then you can't then whoever it is, you remember they came back with a different plan right. showing I think four signs on a building, and the one I had was the one we approved that had three signs. And the date and everything were the same. And the signs were different sizes. Right. Uh, how did that happen? I have Hamilton Ramos here, who's our internal uh, design, to explain that to you because he's the one that has knowledge. Are you guys making plans as you go along to your. your 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 favor or what? Uh, no, no, it was actually my mistake when we were working on plans and developing the last set to be submitted for the permit. Uh, we typically have uh, wall signs and I, I, I grab a typical package. I thought you guys submit. were pulling some kind of a sharp one. No, you? no. Uh, if, I, if you saw the plans, we actually were dated differently. We just didn't revise the same date. Day. No, these were dated the same day. Right, right. That was my mistake. Okay. I, I didn't revise the, uh, the updated revision date. Um, but just so you know, when we're trying to pull something on you, they're all date stamped. <coughs> and the date stamp is show that there was a change in the, in the, in the date when they were completed. Um, so <coughs> this is the one you approved. This is the one that was submitted for, for permit. This is why you saw a change between these two. Um, the dates are, right, that's my mistake, this is what I should have <coughs> But we had date stamps on all our drawings, and you see that this one says November 3rd, and this one says October 16th, which is the one, October 17th, that you okay. uh, approved. Yeah, these, these are the dates we go by here. Right, right. right. No, that, again, that was my mistake. Okay. That was my mistake in the production and coordinating the, the design side in, in house. So, which one is correct? The one that you approved. We have no intent on changing what you previously approved. So this, this is the correct one? Yes. Right. Okay. So your, your question was you wanted greater than 64 square feet on a building of science total? No, so the road sign elevation, when we applied for the ground, ground sign, we calculated as being the 64 plus. Plus not to exceed 16. Correct, plus right. the 16, yeah. which is total 80. And I believe the building inspector uh, may have not interpreted the same way we did, but I believe he may have inquired of you. And right. it was clarified now that, that what was previously approved, what we're seeking, is what we apply for. Okay. But the, the buildings, the, the, they, they wanted more? That, that one shows more, but this, right. this one meets bylaw. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one does not. Right. Yeah, that was a matter of the interpretation as to whether they're tenants or separate. No, what we're seeking is what complies with the bylaw, what you previously approved. There's no. Good. Good. So, that being said, um, 
I'm not sure if you want us to wait for the amended language, put that on the cover sheet and give you the five full sets, or what your preference is in terms of getting the final five full sets, obviously so that we can work uh, through all the departments, but the, ultimately, uh, in some time, hopefully in the near future, get the certificate of compliance from the peer review, and come back and have that. I've got a question for you that Dr. Tesla couldn't answer. How many uh, Teslas are registered in Hampshire County? I don't know, but I'd be more than happy to look yeah, into it. I'd love them. to find out. Yeah. We've got 12 charging stations there, so if there's more than 12 Teslas, uh, I'll take you to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen more than 12 myself. So, <clears throat> after the last time you were in, we were given a, uh, the engineers followed up with an update listing all of the correct dates for all of the plans, but now those have changed again. I think so if we could just get that again we Absolutely. had voted to approve an updated set of plans and we wanted to be sure we had the right dates so if you could just get me and e just email me the correct dates uh, because I've held off doing the amendment because it's been a moving target I understand <laughs> yeah, hopefully we get a final set and move from there so I'll have John Herman from BHB email that the final set right. and then we'll take it to the Next step. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parmar. <coughs> um, two things. First thing is the garage door for the Manny's building. Okay. Um, this is the one that we would like to choose for my door. This is one door? Yeah. Do you have any different designing on it? Yes, it's panel panelized door. Those are the windows, probably. Yeah, so we decided to go yeah. with windows. Yeah. It's a little bit more decorative and uh, has a little bit more detail to it than just a plain door. So this is the outline of this. This is the the, the actual door will have this. Yes. Yeah, so and look at this many different looking panels or windows in it. Yes. Oh, so that's in, that's raw windows. Yes. And the rest of panels. Correct. Okay. Um, we were debating, still debating, if we want to go dark gray or white. So um, most likely we'll probably go white. It's definitely <coughs> way more decorative than standard. <coughs> yes. Did you mention who was going to put this in? Did you mention like over the door company? <laughs> most likely we'll probably go with, um, I think they're going to choose to go with Ray North, and they'll probably do it. I think they're IE Sampton. Yeah, we got a pretty good one in Hal that you might want to check out too. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no skin. Okay. <laughs> Are you a salesman? I think it's, I think it's uh, Divine Overhead Doors. That's actually the name of it. Yeah. Most likely they'll, they'll do my house. Gotcha. <laughs> anyway. I'm kidding. What do you think of the, what are the, what does the door look like? Look good? Reasonable? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Yep. All right, the other item, um, we have to move a transformer on the property itself. Um, I believe the transformer itself is over 30 years, close to 40 years old. Eversource has asked us to relocate it. Um, essentially closer to a paved access point for them to get to. Uh, we went through the um, conservation committee, they took a look at it. They're okay with that. Where is it? This is where you want to move it to or where it's where it is? Um, we want to move it to up, so closer to Oh, okay, so you have to go from here yeah. further, further into the property. Correct. So um, that's right close to the parking lot? It's cr it's closer, correct. I'm just going to put some guide, guide posts around and make sure it doesn't get clogged. Yeah, all. bullards and... Yeah, bullards. Correct. Right. Um, the other item in there, if you notice, is we want to keep the trees, <coughs> the original trees that have always been on the property, instead of the... Original design, they wanted to cut them down and replant new ones. We'd like to keep the ones that have been there since we bought the property. They're large, they're mature, and they produce enough coverage. So it changes the islands a little bit and the asphalt area. So um, there's actually less asphalt than there was before, but still equal amount of parking because we removed the door from the side and put it in the front. The front sheets work is, is the revision the back sheet is working yeah originally but it was correct and those trees they're all mature trees correct i think they've been there since it's been built yeah, yeah. they were put in when uh billy Bryan was installed like how many 
eons ago. Yeah, we we like them. We don't want to cut them down. Um, they produce, you know, they have a lot of coverage on it. They're mature. They yeah. they look good too. We maintain them. We yeah. Healthy them. trees. What was that? They're healthy. Uh, yes. They, to us, they look healthy. <coughs> there might be one that we have to take a look at next year, but right now it still looks good to us. But my tree guy said you might want to take a look at it next year. But that's one out of. I think they were originally having us remove five. I don't have a problem with that. I wonder if the parking is the same when you get the ground really the same. Well, I don't want to see them cut the trees down and not find no tree back. Well, no, I agree. If they cut a tree down, just replace it with another tree that's all next year. Okay. No review. We did have to cut down a birch. It was a less than. 12 inches, 8 inch perch that was there that we cut down those. Um, but if, if there's another bush or another tree that you would like to us to replant in its place, we could do that. As long as it's native. Okay. Just a native tree. We want to, we'd like to see native trees replaced, not something like, you know, Japanese or no. uh, something like that. You know, not, I mean, not that those are bad looking trees, but we'd like to keep them full of native trees. Okay. But then as time passes, one gets disease or dies. And they cut it down. <coughs> they need to understand that. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> I don't have no problem with that. Anybody else have anything? No. Bill's right there now. Okay. You want to make a motion on that? Yeah, it's an amendment right here. So I'll make a motion to amend your site plan approval on the basis that the changes are minor, don't require reopening the public hearing. We're going to revise the loading uh, door for the attached. The loading door and relocate, as it was on the back. Uh, relocate a transformer and change the planting plan to retain existing trees and replace as needed. <coughs> and the door is going to be. I'm going to attach this. Okay, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a, an attachment. <coughs> That's the motion. Second. So moved. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Greg Switzer. Switzer? Close enough. Uh, I represent Dr. Bow, I'm the general contractor. Uh, we're seeking site plan approval to convert uh, Stan's fruit, star, uh, fruit stand at 200 Russell Street to a dental office, 4,800 square foot, single tenant space. Okay. We have all the applications and plans here. And we're going to concurrently uh, make applications for the highway department on the state DOT, which is the state road, for a curb cut for next. And uh, historical commission approval also. Okay. Because it's in. She dropped Because it's in the uh, whatever district requires historic uh, commission approval. So we've sent the facts to them, which I guess initiates the application. Uh, the lot's pretty flat. Um, actually, there's no trees or vegetation. Are you going to take the building down or just... Yeah, we're going to take the building down. Put another one in place. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, we're going to clear the site completely. Yeah. So, site plan approval, business use of the aquifer? Yes. Yeah, aquifer what's the building? as well as... Uh, what's the building going to look like? Uh, the architectural is around there, too. Are we sure that the existing building is a historical in nature? <laughs> it's uh, historical. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's historical, <laughs> right. There There's a floor plan and an elevation. Yeah, okay. <coughs> and we're, we're given, uh, again, we're going to use it for the historic commission to make sure they approve it. That's again, it's a single story. That's slightly a better appearance for that. Yeah. Well, uh, <coughs> trying to keep that one, but we decided to keep it as a whole. That looks good. And again, it's a, it's a single tenant. How long is the building? Uh, it's 4,800 square feet. I'm thinking it's somewhere around 100 by 48, maybe. There's a support the kind of space before, right here. Oh, okay. We're going to put a break in the roof. We're going to put a break in the roof somewhere. 89 volt. Uh, other than the, the gables that are shown. 
Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, there's, no, there's gables. Oh, the top. This, this is the top line. Okay, the ridge has to be broken. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Put yes. A cupola on there. Just a cupola or uh, uh, something like that in there. Yeah. Well, we'll be happy to amend that before. Uh, okay. And actually, I'll have them redraw with it. Just a small cupola. Um, a cupola in, in relatively. Just to break the ridge line. Be, yeah, in, in some kind of relative scale to the size of the building, and also put it you know, something, yeah. something like that. And when you come to the the planning board meeting, please, and enter the conservation committee, not the, the Histor historical commission. You'll need, you should have a color rendering. Yeah, color you're going to have they're going to get that. Okay. Yeah. We don't need it now. No, no, I remember. Really but uh, when it's for the meeting, I didn't realize that the ridge had to be broken. Yeah, anything over 75 feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it shows, uh, I think it shows four wall packs on the lights on the, on the building downlit only. Okay. And uh, two pole lights in the back again down with only so that like true box file lights? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what we want. And we'll have the engineer and the architect do the actual uh, for, uh, the presentation next month. Yeah, the uh, so they're gonna have parking lots like that. <coughs> yeah, lot there's, a, there's a okay when you put when you do the parking lot the parking. When you do that. It's all behind the building as per building. Okay. Um, full light, full light. Do do a uh, photometric as far as light leaving the property. What it's going to look okay. like. Okay. If you don't have that. Yeah, anymore. we'll give you cut sheets on the lighting that shows no lighting leaving the property. Okay. Okay. It's a pretty simple project. If you, because no because there's residences here and here, yeah. we want to make sure that we're not spilling over into their property. Yeah, I understand completely. We're going to. Okay. There's a planning plan too. I think we're going to add maple trees. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going back, okay. Yeah. How big is the problem? No, it's acre point six seven. It's a pretty big one. Okay. And it's pretty flat, and it was pretty expensive. Is this about where the existing building is? No, actually, the existing <coughs> building is much closer oh, to really? the street. Okay. So I'll have them also supply uh, cut sheets for the lighting and show uh, the roof, the ridge broken. Right. And color. color well, the yeah, to the historic commission. You don't care about the color. We do. So, oh, you guys we do. We do. We do well oh, okay. because we incorporate okay. that into the decision. Okay. So, the planning board ultimately has the, makes the call. The yes. historic commission is advised. I got you. Right. Okay. Yeah, so, we want to make sure that what you okay. should, just make sure that whatever colors you make it, that's what we want to see built. Oh, yeah. Because we will hold you to that color oh, yeah. scheme and to that design. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're also peer review. We're uh, sending that out tomorrow to uh, Berkshire Design. Maybe they were on your list yes. for engineering peer okay. review. You going to do your sign at the same time? <coughs> yeah. He actually, uh, I think we're going to do, I think we're going to do a separate uh, permit for the sign because he drew it way too small. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sixty-four square foot. You mean? Yeah, I think he showed like one quarter of, the, of what's well, he's allowed. He's got a 24 square foot, so yeah. it doesn't have to be 64, that's the max. No, this is, he I, have, I he's, got a, he's got a 24 square foot. Yeah, sign. we're going to up that. I mean, 24 isn't reasonable. Right. Okay, we're going we're gonna to come closer to the They will get it too. <coughs> okay. Okay, so we got Mass DOT, Historical Commission, yep. peer review going on. We'll change it to show the colors, and we'll change it to show a ridge line break, and we'll also uh, give you um, the down lighting specs to make sure the light doesn't leave the property. And exterior lighting on the side, it can't be internal. Oh, okay. All right. And that's a, a special permit anyway, uh, a separate permit anyway for the sign, right? Okay. Wait a minute. And I'm assuming we'll be notified it's That's going to be the first you, Tuesday at uh, you, you will know tonight when you leave when you're in oh. Oh, okay. um, Are you going to be spending over 40,000 square feet? I don't think so. No. So you don't, you don't, no, need, no, we don't. You don't need the erosion. No. Okay, good. That but there, you know, he did put them on erosion plan, just a basic one. That, that fine. Well, I'll say you don't need the, right. you don't need the firm, the special firm. No, no, no. For that. no. You just need the aquifer, the site plan. Approval. Yes, yes. That's my understanding. Okay.
16th, I'll be here. Hmm? 16th, I will be here. You will be here for the second? Okay. You will not be here for the second? No. Okay. <clears throat> then you have to go to the uh, 16th because I'm not participating in the decision. Ah. Okay. Would you mark in that point? These January 16th. Uh, let's see, this is called Connecticut River Valley Dentists. Mm -hmm. Do you want to Already? Yes, it is. That's the letter. 
Where's the apartment going to be? In the barn or in the house? No, we're uh, taking down the garage, which is attached to the house, and replacing it with an addition right there for the accessory apartment. So the first floor will be like, a, like an office space. So this, this is what's here today? Correct. What's it going to look like when you're done? <coughs> We need those plates. Is that the house that has a fire? No. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. That's, 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 that's in South Zulu. Okay. 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 So basically, the garage is here. So we're going to take it what's there. We're going to take it down and add it. So the first floor will be like an office space that will be basically underneath. The second floor will be the actual accessory apartment for in-laws or my parents. And then we're going to convert this into, this will be a space for our oldest son to have a little bit of a long time. Uh, area, if you will. There's going to be, the first floor is going to be a what? Just an office space, like our business, you know, not the business, but um, a working space. Home office. Home yeah, home office. office. My partner works for Stanford University. She's a remote employee, so she works here. She's employed by them. So this would be a place of her work. Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. No, I said that I have it. Um, How many square foot is this thing? Uh, I forget. It's been a long time since I thought about that. Uh, but it's underneath whatever the allowance is, whatever it is, it's 900 square feet. We're under any of the wheel or wheel or call it. Yeah, they work. They work. Yeah. Oh, we're good. Don't, don't, don't call it an office space. It's workspace. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. workspace. Yeah, all the workspace. So this will be our workspace. So, this will be the accessory apartment. And then this will be a uh, bedroom for yeah. our home or something. I think it would uh, fall into the category of the no no visitors. Yeah, no. Yeah. But, but just the same. Yeah. We, yeah. To, 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 to avoid any you don't have to Any issue, just call it a workspace, a working space, sure. studio, whatever you want to call it. Okay. 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 Under 920? Yes, it is. That's uh, whatever the number was. I think you knew the number last time. We're under. That's a big difference. We're going to start with space. Studio. Yeah. Space. This is one bedroom living and a couple of kitchens. That is roughly 32 by 28. So do you think you can get your architect to get us a reduced scale? This is really what we need, but we need multiples of it to... Uh, sure. Yeah, I actually, I can probably... Um, I have them, I just didn't realize I needed to bring them. So I apologize. This is... This is it's just you an email, if that's what, would that be oh, yeah. small enough? Yeah, yeah. Does this, does this show the, the driveway, the parking on the door? Uh, it does not, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the, actually, uh, this sheet right here, it basically, would be perfect if we could reduce it in size. Okay. Because those, so, that, those are almost the same thing as here. I'm you have sure the PDF, we can just send it and we'll make it fit. Okay, all right, remember that, he sent me a copy of that. In the email, so that it would be didn't need something smaller. You have to have that. You have to go to the board of health. You got that? I already did that. No problem there. No issues. You have no issues. Right here. Yeah. Right here from the board of health. We had somebody come out and tested everything. We assessed it was a very good working condition and will accommodate what we have now. We just need to. Uh, extend the reaching for a little bit. You don't have an application, right? No, right. I do not. We didn't okay. get that far. Okay. You can fill that out. Okay. And use, here's a pen. All right. Thank you. you. Just go over there and fill it out and give it to us and we'll schedule it. Butter, mm -hmm. like when, when you come back when that's filled out, we'll take care of all that. Perfect. Right. Thank you. Oh, here. Can I do that? You can take email it to you. Uh, yeah. Planning at HadleyMA.org. But okay. if you go to our... Um, page on the Hadley site, it's there. It's there. Just okay. click on my name and it will uh, it'll pop, up. It'll okay. pop up. Thank you. Oh, well, Gentlemen, I think I made a mistake. I think we are going for erosion, too, because we probably are going to serve the I think that was the engineer's intent. Okay. The, the 
footprint's much smaller than an acre, but I'm sure by the time we stack loom and everything. And I think that was his intent, yes. You can see I just picked these up three hours ago, but he waits till the last minute to complete their plans. Okay. That's all I was going to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Larry. Just to see if the AC working. Oh, you know that. that. <laughs> I forgot to bring our floor. Is that working? Yeah, sure. We've got a kerosene. Oh, those are Right. That's Exactly. If you make the meat, you've got to make it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we haven't had a chance to uh, talk since that workshop. Uh, rule number one is always don't go to the meeting until you make sure your laptop works and you can show your PowerPoint presentation. Anyway, I always do that. That's, that's a cardinal thing. But after all that, I mean, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, I learned a lot uh, from it. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in it. So what are your, what are your sentences? So I've I printed some of these off if you want to go. Is the, uh, <coughs> just one copy? Just one side. copy. On both sides. Yeah, that that was what they were supposed to hand out? Yeah. Yeah. That was, you could almost imagine. The, uh, <coughs> Will the PVPC be doing that uh, affordable housing investigation stuff? That we are, in fact, getting training on it in two weeks. There are four of us in the office who will be taking that. Okay. And we, we will be getting that from that's housing, and once we are done with that, we will be certified. Okay. And what? Any idea what the fee would be? That we don't know, but it's not going to be inexpensive because uh, <coughs> uh, this is what we have to do. Lay it out is quite it's quite expensive. I can sort of see why the price came in so high uh, for, for for them. I'm not sure ours will come in that high, but we will have to work out an hourly uh, rate for that. Okay. Okay. We'll have a much better idea on that after we have it. Okay. To be determined. That's all. Yeah. <coughs> we are, we are well, how does that work? That just works on the price per unit. Uh, yeah. Likely that would be how it would be done, or per unit. Not on the project, but per unit. Because that's how they're that's how they're administered. So we are only administering the individual units that are uh, the affordable. Yeah. So with some with a project like Barrett's, there would be under the original plan, there would have been about four units, five units that would have come online at one time. But then the resale would only come up every yeah. three to five years after that. So yeah. it makes sense that you would price them per Refer the available the, Yeah, units. and then there's an annual report you have to do at the end of the year to, to file with the state. There's no fixed cost and variable cost per unit. You want to get in the game, you don't have to pay something and then incremental over that. Of course, this is what I thought. This is America. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a fixed cost of whether you're have one or not, right? No, it, everything we do is based on an hourly rate for how much it works, how much, how much time it takes. So who, who implements the committee? Do we have control over who's going to be on the committee or is that the select one? It's the chief elected, no, the chief, the chief, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's chief elected. You all said Deaton. It's the mayor of selectman. I think it's the, uh, for some reason I read this, Huh? I was under the impression it was going to be, it could be your uh, town minister. Well, we don't, he's, uh, he's not a... Uh, Chief administrator? Okay. Yeah, that's the select board. Oh, okay, it would probably be that. Yeah, he's uh, not an administrator per se. Okay, 
or he's not a town manager. Right. Your bylaw can be set up to require uh, an appointee from the planning board, an appointee from the housing authority, an appointee from this group, an appointee from that group. Uh, and you can you know, nominate somebody uh, from your board who wants to serve in that capacity. <clears throat> but it would be they would be appointed by the selection board. Yeah. Right. And the select would could appoint the town. And I believe the chief the chief official is automatically uh, on it in the head of it. So will it be a full time employee? Would you need a full time employee? Would we? Or no. 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 Full time no. No? Why? The way everything else goes in this town? Well, that's, oh. that's what I'm Full time, no. I think you might need, at some point, some administrative staff. Thank you. I mean, that was, that's what I, that was the one major thing that I gleaned from that workshop. I, was I, it, I, yeah, well, it, it, it's, it, it's a fair amount of work. It is oh, rather sophisticated. It's only if the trust grows to a certain size. Yes. Yeah, so it's only if the trust grows to a certain size. The application. Yeah. Yeah. A check for the filing fee yep. and reduce yep. set of the plans to the town clerk okay. in the next couple of days. Gotcha. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Well, Larry, so I want I want to make the editorial <laughs> comment. We're we're treading into waters we have no idea. I think we had certain assumptions we had last time. For example, we thought our local bills housing authority could have control over it and that would be relatively yeah. simple. Yeah. However, we didn't check with them and little did we know that that would not be their choice, yeah. although it, it, it was our choice. So presently we have, what is it, 2,200 houses in town, housing units. 285 are affordable. Mm -hmm. We're 13 percent, well, 12.97 percent. Really, the highest in Happy Valley. Now, if we were going to drop to the 10 percent threshold that this, some developer could come in and put as many units as they want in, we'd have to build. Right now, we're building 10 to 12 houses per year. We'd have to wait 60 years before we come close to the 10 percent. Do we really need this housing trust? You need is, is it a political issue yeah. or is it something that, from a planning point of view, we should do? I, I think we're talking about two sort of different things here. Well, what is the inclusionary zoning provision? And that's the provision that requires that for any project, a certain percentage of units have to be provided as a portal. So that's one thing. Then you have a, a choice. And the choice is how do you want that development to provide those units? If you're having the developer provide those units, physically, uh, you don't really need to have a municipal housing trust. Right. All you would need to do is really contract with somebody to do the administration of the, uh, the turnover and the rental of the, of the, of the units to make sure they stay affordable. If you were going to be accepting a lieu of payment provision, you need somebody to accept that money and have the ability to use it. And that's where the municipal housing trust uh, kicks in. We can't, we can't just have the treasurer have an escrow account. It has to be a legal trust. Yeah. Yes. And you've got to have a committee to, yeah, to, to, to take care of that. Yeah. No. And it is the chief executive. Uh, so are we, are we getting into a situation that we cannot extricate ourselves from? <clears throat> you could be. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, from our first conversation on this, I expressed to you I had reservations. Um, and we have a lot of communities in our region who adopted almost identical inclusionary zoning bylaws, as, as did you. Uh, and, that, and some of them do have the in lieu of payment and they have the same issue with you, which is their housing authority probably does not have the will or the capacity to administer. Yeah. Um, there are some um, bylaws, and, and this is what I typically recommend, that don't have the in lieu of payment provision, that require that the developer actually physically provide for the units. Um, well, I'll tell you, I like that better because there's too many Mm -hmm. unanswered questions and like you said the build out is far away and that's what it doesn't add it makes it further the wolf is not at our door no and, and, and i i don't want to not do something well we can't we can't say well 60 years or so far we don't have to worry about it that is 
to me, that is unacceptable. We need to keep the inclusionary zoning by law. Yes. Why? Let me explain. Because it is, in my opinion, it is absolutely poor planning to say we don't need to worry about it for 60 years. We've been on this board, you've been on this board for 40 years, over 40, 40, about almost 45 years. I've been on it for 35, okay? Bill's been on it for like 30, 31. 34, maybe. You guys are all right. You guys are all right. Not However, all I'm saying is that's not that far in the future. 60 years is not that far away, okay? And to say we don't need to worry about it, Again, my opinion is totally unacceptable. Yeah. Well, we I, have to do something. Maybe we don't need the housing trust. Now that we know the rules and how difficult they are, like this subdivision is coming before us, is eight lots. They need to provide one unit of affordable. So how would they do that? That's what we tell them. If somebody comes in and they meet the criteria, this is what you need to do, and this is what is going to cost you. No. Right. So they know ahead of time, before we approve, and before they put a lot of money into it, we are not going to accept, if we decide that, we are not going to accept payment in lieu. Mm -hmm. we, we, we revise both the senior housing and the affordable, and the inclusionary zoning to represent what we're talking about right here. No payment in lieu, you take care of it is going to cost you some high percentage and this is what you're going to do well, I, I didn't mean to ignore it completely I perhaps didn't make myself clear but uh, what I'm saying is that we don't have to rush something for this town meeting because there's a lot of yeah. studying and work that we well, have to yeah, do but that's what point. we're doing though yeah. if we just put it on it'll never get done but yeah. the whole point is how does that leave Barry Roberts with his project? If he doesn't hire someone to take care of the paperwork for that, and that goes on their inventory, that's a problem. We got that in motion now. Yeah, he, he's going to have to do that. Right. And, and whether it's us or, or another firm that's out there. Well, Barry, Barry's off the table right now because he got a variance to excuse from oh, that's right. right. You got a Barry. You got a Barry. Let, let, okay. Let's not worry about Barry. Yes, Barry is not the issue. Yeah, he's an the illustration. Issue. The, the issue. The, he has brought forward. He brought the light. He brought the problem lights. to our light. So let's right. not worry about Barry Roberts and that four yeah. four or five units. Let's worry about everything yeah. else that will be coming before us in the next yeah. sixty years. Yeah. He got away. I, I mean, I, I think what what you need what to do is you, you need to clarify. Do you want to do the move payment or not? Yes. And if you decide that that's something you don't want to bite off, it's not that you can't go back and revisit it at a future date. That's right. But if it's something that you don't think you have the capacity to administer now, well, you could easily just amend your bylaw to remove that point. I'm just curious, at what point do you get involved if, in fact, you become involved with managing these types of um, issues? Well, at what point in the procedure, before the uh, applicant is approved to live here, before he applies for a mortgage, after he gets rejected for, by a mortgage, yeah. when do you get involved? I, I would suggest that from the developer's point of view, he approach us and we have to have conversations at the beginning of the project. Right. So we can have something in place by the time, right. by the time it's, it's, it's developed and it's ready to go. Well, so he wants to know the cost still. That's right. They, want, they need to Before, know what yeah. the cost is going to be. Put his finance in together. And so we bet. Who will be dealing with you when someone wants to buy one of these properties, the developer or the person that's applying for the for the uh, for the unit, the initially will be the developer. Okay. Developer. Okay. Now let's let's say <laughs> rental units, I believe, are a lot easier than purchase units. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So let's leave rental units off the table just for discussion purposes. Yeah. Right. Now talk about purchase units because we're probably going to see a few of those. So. Mm -hmm. Let's just say the development the development that's coming before us is on Shattuck Road. There's eight units. So one of those needs to be affordable. Right? So the developer will come in to see you, just example, to see you or the housing trust, the mass housing, whatever that, that group put the this 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 um, housing trust uh, housing partnership, MHP, and they take care of the initial purchase. Yeah. There's a 
deed restriction that says it must stay affordable. Correct. So now that will keep it on the inventory. Yeah, keep it on the inventory. That's so right. I let's just say you'll use me. I buy the property. I mean, I qualify. Yeah. I buy this affordable house. I build it. Yada yada yada. Yeah. Ten years down the road, whatever number may be, I want to sell it. How do I do that? You can sell it. You would, what I would suggest to you is you contact us. So we go over the steps of what you have to do to go through to sell it to ensure that in fact you're selling it at an affordable price and to somebody who is qualified. Okay. Wouldn't that be the same uh, process as originally buy it? It would be a lot of the same process. It's what it would be, so what I would have to pay you a fee to go through to make sure somebody meets the qualifications. The seller. The seller. The seller. Yes. The seller. The seller. The seller. The seller. Me. The yeah. Okay. And that's going to, so I'm going to sell a house for X number of dollars, and on top of that money that I get, yeah. I am at to, to, I'm going to say, you say, sell, sell to Bill, I'm going to have to pay you a fee on top of that, on order to choose the cost. So, yeah. What do you think of the is sale, make sure that in fact it stays within the parameters of what it was required? Could it be affordability, though, in a certain year, vary by month? If, if uh, mortgage rates were going up, yeah. then, then the, what the person could afford would go, would stay the same, but the amortization schedule would go up if, if mortgage rates went up. Follow me? I do, but I'm not so, sure. So, so how, how does that work? I'm not I'm sure just, that would factor into it. I mean, I think- But that's affordability. Correct. That's yes, affordability. Yes. Somebody can afford a mortgage at three and three quarters, right. but they so probably can't afford a mortgage once, at three and three quarters. Once the sale goes through, <laughs> And you know, once you qualify as an affordable unit and you own it, um, we're not going to prevent you from getting raises at your job so that your income doesn't rise above that limit. And we're not going to make you sell that house at the point that your <coughs> income does exceed that limit. We're just going to make sure that when you do sell that house, it is sold at an affordable housing rate to somebody who is qualified. Now, how, how <coughs> do we ensure? that when I go to sell a house, I follow the guidelines. There's the deed restrictions to take care of. Deed restrictions are on there, and Bill is the buyer, Bill's attorney, uh, doing the title search on it will identify that and will ensure, or and will, and will uh, notify Bill that it's in best interest, in fact, you follow through on that so, to make sure it's all So okay. basically when the sale takes place, it's not an arm's length transaction. It's based on a formula. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I'll have more information in two weeks. We understand. We're, we're, we're not trying to get that. I'm trying to get just like a general idea yeah. of how we so do it. That's going to be exactly what's going to happen <clears throat> five years, ten years from now. You're going to forget that there's all these restrictions on it. You're going to go to your local realtor. They're going to go, oh, lovely house. Put a price on it. Market it. Yeah. And then when I do the title search <laughs> for the buyer, we'll discover this affordability. Yeah. Which will blow that first sale out of the water completely. And it'll also blow the owner yeah. out of the water. Yeah. Just off the well, they will the well, no, they, they will forget the first time they list it. Then, well, whose responsibility is it? It's the owner. The owner. The owner. It's the owner's yeah. responsibility, but, but the owner's going to forget. After 10 years, the owner's going to forget all of this. What do you want to send a monthly reminder? Well, it's not whether it's convenient or not. The point is, Everybody's going to go through the exercise of trying to sell this house at market rate the first time because everyone's forgotten all of this that we've talked about. Not our problem. And then uh, as the buyer's attorney, I'll do a title search. I'll find there is a problem. I will advise my client that he can't buy this house because of the deed restrictions. And then Jim is going to turn oh, to yeah. you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Are you going to be kidding me? If I buy a house and qualify it's affordable, yeah, you're, you're probably gonna, I know that's, that's what the good. hell I bought. You didn't buy a wheelbarrow. You bought a house. But pe yeah. pe people are going to conveniently what? think that they can get They can do what they want. What's yeah. recorded so, in a so team is done. It, it can't pass by will. I can't will it to my child if I die, right? I don't know. Well, the kid, I don't know. Now, Larry, <laughs> Jim was alluding to the uh, the eight units, that, I mean, the eight housing units we're going to have on Shattuck Road, and yeah. they claim that they're affordable, oh, that one unit that's supposed to be affordable is going to be off premise. Yeah. How is that done? Outside of the project? Yes. Uh, do you allow that? Yes. Okay, then that's how they can do it. How, how will they do it? They will they have to own or buy a lot. 
get ownership of it and or uh, a house yeah, or a house yeah. right and develop it and uh, sell it as, as an affordable housing unit yeah they can do that do you allow just like very whatever you include your a &Rs? no oh good because they found some town that did I'm talking about how do you do that no uh, how do you yeah, I mean, it's like you have, you have a five eight uh, or a five lot A and R or yeah. eight lot A and R, mm -hmm. and you've got to do one of them as uh, uh, an affordable. No, we, sure. we're, we're Procedurally, how do you even think that work? We're strictly subdivisions. Good. Oh. We, yeah, in multifamily. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's clean. Because I mean, first of all, A and R is A and R. I mean, yeah. I don't know how you. It was, it was Southampton did that, and Southampton removed the special permit provision. So it's all by right? Yeah, that's, ex that's exactly what? right. What? It was by right. Yeah. Uh, they, 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 have, they have an affordable and inclusionary bylaw, much like yours. It requires it for every num you know, number of units. It triggers it, and you have to provide an more affordable units. But uh, they remove the requirement that it be a special permit process. So that it's by right. And so I'm looking at trying to think, well, how do you enforce this? How do you administer this? How do you, how do you administer that? So when they're coming in for an A&R, and they include A&Rs, so somehow through the A&R process, the planning board has to weigh into the affordable. Good luck for them. Lot. Yeah. It's, anyway, OK. So, so I'm glad you don't. I don't want to forget about the housing trust. I think we need to look at that in much Closer magnifying glass, but I think we need to revise both of the senior housing bylaw and the inclusionary zoning bylaw. I don't know whether we leave the housing trust in there or not, but we tell people that you, that's not an option because you don't have a housing trust and so you can't donate. Yeah, I think you need to take it out. Take it out. <laughs> okay. I um, yeah, I think we do have to conform because right now senior housing and inclusionary are at odds. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, I think what we just went through this exercise of discussing how it would work if you didn't have a housing trust illustrates you know there are problems both ways, and I absolutely can see problems with the housing trust. It's one more board that needs volunteers to fill it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That's what I don't. And, and if you looked at the. It's a workshop. The communities that had the most successful housing trust pro project, you know, it's, it's Cambridge. I mean, it's communities like that that have a, a really strong in-house capacity to administer it, and they have a really strong uh, uh, pro affordable housing. Uh, yeah, very proactive to in that. But a housing yeah. authority, right? So here's but they don't do it the housing. No, they, they do it through the community trust. development usually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't make one for myself, but give that give that to Larry. So what I did was I took a, a skim this afternoon through affordable housing for affordable housing trust for individual towns. Mm -hmm. And there is not, you, John, you were talking about, let's see what the documents look like. Well, basically there aren't a lot of documents. What it comes down to is that in, most of these, there's a note somewhere to the effect that uh, town meeting voted to adopt the provisions of general laws. Yeah. And that then became the housing trust. Right. And their trust bylaws almost all look identical. Yeah. And it's almost word for word from what the state uh, So, is. So you're on a roll there, and you got interrupt. Well, the, I'm looking at, Part of it, I'm looking at it from the perspective that Jim started on about long-range planning here. That uh, you know we have an opportunity right now with a board that's fairly this this is what the state very sophisticated. That we we really owe it to the town to fix this one way or the other because. After us, we don't know, we, we can hope that there will be dedicated people who will, but I'm not seeing that they're, we're going to find people with, who are willing to do this, sign on to this for 20 or 30 years. So I think what we have, we have this window of opportunity, and that's why, yes, it is a lot of work, but I think we need to work it through, because we understand it right now, and we really owe it to the town to set up something well, we can, that will have some longevity here. Uh, 
I just look at I look at it from the administrative overhead of tracking compliance. Um, you know who who is who at the town level is going to even tell Jim as the homeowner that he should contact Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, you know, it, we're, I, I see that getting, doing, letting the developer put in the property makes a lot of sense at the outset, but I just see that turning into a snake pit but you're gonna, 10 to 20 years down the road. No, but, but you're gonna have the same issue if you have a housing trust. And the housing trust is, is is building these units. I don't. Well, that's what they were saying. The, the housing trust can do it a lot of different ways. Yes. Yeah. And we don't need to have the housing trust building the units. Right. What uh, <coughs> What was mentioned when Barry Roberts was talking about it was that uh, I think Lennox has a housing trust, and what the housing trust did was basically put out a request for proposals. They they. I think basically identified a piece of property the town wanted to buy. Yeah. Then the town bought it, then put out a request for proposal for someone else to run right. on that site. But and we, the benefit was that they got to choose where the development was going to be. Right. But once those units got developed, they had the same administrative responsibility as everybody else. But the whole so you have the same issue. And if it's a sure. home, if it's a homeowner ownership sale, you got the same issue that we were just working on. What what Jim said, I agree with all the nuts and bolts to both sides, right? To find out so we make sure we do the right thing. Fire is the procedure. When someone comes in, it's just like peer review. We give them a list of engineers that's acceptable for that. Yeah. So you would do the same thing for this. Yeah. If he comes in for a project, here's a list of people you you contact and you're going to pay them you're going to deal with them but this is what's acceptable but i think bill's point would be 10 years down the line when the second person comes in they're not going to have that background uh, that the first person had and so they may you're right they may have some uh, but it's uh, in a deed restriction the, 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 the yeah, thing yeah, is that's true whether they, it's, they whether, can't go nowhere whether, whether it's a housing trust that I just say the housing trust built whether they whether the housing trust built the units or they gave it to a contract to build. <coughs> Ten years down the road, whether I bought the property from John mm -hmm. or from you or from you, or I bought it from Joe that came to the housing trust to put in the money, I still own that property. The housing trust is going to be keeping track of this. Right. It's going to be me yeah. and my deed restriction. <laughs> And like Bill said, it's, it, it's going to be a snake yeah. pit. I see the snake pit there, whether the housing trust paid for it roundabout yeah. or John, the developer, paid for it directly. But, but all restrictions, whether it's a conservation restriction or historic preservation restriction or affordable housing restriction, all have like a third party who's sort of responsible for making sure that the other two parties play by the rules. Um, Yeah, I mean, we'll have to work that one, walk, work that one through. The, uh, the, <coughs> now, <coughs> would the tax title have anything about that? The tax, the the assessor's office have anything about affordable? When, isn't that like a lien or something on the property? That would be registered. Well, I mean, the that. assessors are going to assess it for what it's valued at. And the value is going to be based on comps, and, assume value, and I'm assuming the value, uh, the fact that it has a restriction on it would factor into what the value of the property would be. The assessor's office might, because it's going to be deed restrictive, right. the assessor's office cannot, in other words, if I paid, just to know, I paid 100000 for the house, but it's worth three if anybody but me owned it. Yeah. The assessors can't charge you more than hundred grand as tax property. Right. And that's going to be in the tax. Mm -hmm. Title, and I'm going to call it the tax office. They're going to have to know that. Yeah. So the, the town will be tracking that. They have to, just like 61A. Right. Yeah. How do we know what the assessors are going to assess that building at? Well, they can't assess it at more than what I paid for it because of, uh, well, 
I would assume, but I mean, this is something. Yeah, I, I mean, if the resale value is at that affordable rate, yes, then that's what the assessment's going to be made, and that's what the tax was going to be factored. I don't know. Who's, who's going to tell? Who's going to tell the assessor every year what the value is? Then they're the ones to tell. Yeah, but they but assess, but they, they don't. They don't value the valuation. They don't value properties that have price appreciation limits to them. This is again a formula. Who's going to give the select the uh, assessors? the formula by which they can determine the value on a yearly basis. Well, I guess we could uh, uh, ask them, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, the yeah. other thing is, there must be some controlling interest because there's a woman who works in the office for the guy that took over, and she she worked one day a week, uh, and she used to work for Affordable Housing Trust, yeah. and her job is just to make sure that the tax credit goes to the developer. And that's another aspect. So somebody must be keeping track of it because they're not going to accept the tax credit. As in yeah, yeah, they won't. They won't they unless it. it's verified by <coughs> yeah. some organization. And that's what we have to yeah. probably have to get, some yeah. organization. And it might be as simple as the tax office, the assessor's office. It could be, or it, uh, I think it's like community development corporation. Well, maybe the, 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 the assessor's office is the local gatekeeper for the property. And they're going to have to obviously do some coordination with somebody, to your point, to find out what the right valuation is. Now, OK, I mean, I don't want to beat the, but we're, 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 this is a good discussion. Because uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're raising good. questions yeah. and we're, we're, we're finding yeah. issues as we just shoot stuff out there um, that need to be at least looked at. Let me just review so far, make sure we're in agreement. We want to make, we need to make the senior housing and the inclusionary zoning in conjunction with each other yeah. to work together. And I think you put yeah. some, some words together yeah. on that, if we could just refine them yeah. to make sure. We'll do that. In other words, the, housing, the, the senior housing should reference the inclusionary and just right. amend from this point on the inclusionary for affordability. <coughs> we want to, do we want to take out the housing trust fund part of the inclusionary zoning bylaw? Right. Not until we totally understand that. The we we totally have, understand. Well, 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 right now it's in there. It's in there. I know. But, but, but so right now, any way to administer. Yeah, right now what we have <laughs> is we <laughs> authorize three methods. Right. Build me an affordable unit in your development. Give me an affordable unit somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Or take my money. Yes. Payment in lieu, which is exactly what we do with APR. We've never had a private APR, right? Uh, but <coughs> the payment in lieu doesn't have anywhere to go, and that's the that's problem. The problem. It's a whole different than APR has. Right. APR had a pre-existing fund to put money into. Sure, so that was yeah. that was much. This, and you don't need a housing trust this or, or a similar like entity APR. to to do that. Right. There's no. There's, you know, there's, there's already. Well, that was. That was already yeah. set up to the that state an and the conservation yeah. commissioners. Yeah. That was an easy one. Yeah. So the two of them go together. Retain payment in lieu. Yeah. You can't have payment in lieu without a trust. <coughs> sure. If you so if, not, so you, if you delete payment in lieu, we don't need to talk about a trust. Correct. If we have a trust, we have to keep payment in lieu. And you have to do the trust. Yeah. Yes. Um, I like the idea with the offset offsite building. And the builder doing it. Right. That's yeah. what I like. Okay. That's the simplest way. Yeah, you know, and, and the good news about administering this once it gets off the ground is you're not the first community to do this. Uh, there are other communities that have been doing this and doing this for a while. So we will be able to contact them and get answers to all the questions you've raised because they're all legitimate. Okay. But there are many towns that apparently have overcome those those issues. So you're, you're going to a workshop in two weeks, you yeah. said? So in, in our next meeting, you can report back to us on what you've learned. Except I'll be on vacation your next meeting, yeah. Okay, so the, so first, after so the first meeting has February. 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 The first meeting is February, yes. you can report back yes, to exactly. us what you've learned. Yep. We would then have time <clears throat> to decide the housing trust stays or the housing trust Goes. wording yep. in the bylaw yep. should go. Yep. And come back at that meeting with the revision 
I mean, if the housing trust is right. an easy thing to eliminate if we had to. Yep. But just come back, if you would, at that meeting okay. with the wording to coordinate the inclusionary and senior housing. And that should give you time to get it on your annual time that, meeting. That'll be plenty of time to get up at the hotel meeting. That's, yes. Sounds like a good plan. Okay. And, uh, I mean, I like the housing trust, but I can see it's not that the housing trust scares me yeah. or concerns me. I think that could be administered very well. The problem to the point we've all heard that I would say we've all made is that Bill and John have made a joke is to get a committee together that will do it the way we think it should yeah. be done. I, I, most communities that have like a housing trust started out like having a fair housing committee and a real strong advocacy entity or group to promote affordable housing. Right. Yeah. Um, how, how, how much money do you have that here? No. How much money should be in the trust before you have these types of activism type things going on? What are we going to get from, from It, it depends on what kind of project you do. Yeah. I mean, at the workshop, uh, one of the small towns does gap financing. Yeah. You know, they help provide bridge financing to give you a little extra bump you need to be able to, to acquire the property. Whether it's the closing costs or, or whatever it is, so it's not so necessarily so they're not necessarily kicking in 100 percent of the cost. So then the trust would have a lien on the property. Yeah, the same the, sort of thing. The CPA funding that contributes to that. Yeah, the 10 percent every year that gets right. set aside designated uh, for for housing. Well, Johnny mentioned that perhaps we could renovate the North Hadley Hall with some of this money and get some somebody to run it. Yeah, we'll renovate that. So with uh, Barry Roberts, we're getting what four units at uh, well, five five times seventy two, which is a little over three fifty. <coughs> and uh, we just had a little uh, back and forth with the uh, treasurer's office. The um, the balance in the uh, housing component of CPA is one hundred eighty three thousand dollars. There's this. There's half a million, over half a million dollars available mm -hmm. for some kind of... See, Barry called me about that North Hadley Hall, and he was worried about the the elevator, because he would have to put an elevator. That's correct. And at that time, I said, you know, CPA would have funds to help out on a project like that. And then the money that he would have to invest there he could put into that building. That's correct. And he would own the building, yes. whether it be, right, a rental. Well, except, John, I don't think CPA would fund a private project, but the Affordable Housing Trust could. CPA could. I thought they could, but CPA could do to a private uh, as building. As long as deed restricted. Right. And that that is the biggest. Every one that I've done has been uh, <coughs> not proper enough. Well, you know, not yeah, I'm on the CPA committee, and there is really no legitimate statement as to what they can fund or what they cannot fund. You have to check yeah. with Stuart yeah. Saginaw, and he will yeah. have well, we're, we're a lawyer interpret it. Your CPA plan. Yeah. But, but to your point, that uh, using the housing trust money, it would seem that we could <laughs> The, the Affordable Housing Trust Committee could, as seed money, invest in an elevator for North Hadley Hall. Yeah. Yeah. And then put out a request for proposals for someone to uh, manage uh, rental senior housing in there, in an elevated building, with doing, doing their own renovations to, you know, they, they, there are a lot of ways to skin that cat, but I think that, uh, that is a way that's the seed money option that uh, yeah there's some there's a big hurdle here we can uh make the hurdle go away in exchange for various other concessions we'll put the elevator in you'll put in the apartment walls joe can you find out oh, you on that committee about what you what well you have and to use that as an example right there well, you have to make a, a proposal. Then you send that proposal into the the Stuart Saginaw in Boston, and he will review it. I thought uh, when Edmund Edmund was this goes there, he he called directly because I don't I had. Well, he calls directly, and they will say, well, they want to know the specifics on it. Mm -hmm. So, 
And if you have the specifics available, then they can give an answer. Well, I mean, couldn't we write out a, a scenario that well, would, you could. Would, would, you know. You like, could. Uh, you, would all, you almost should make a specific proposal uh, and go before the, the whole committee. <laughs> Oh, the whole CPA committee or the well, the whole CPA committee because yeah. you know they'll have been but they don't have to follow any rules and regulations they can say no we just don't like the idea and it's a it's well, a waste of money and it, even if it qualifies they can turn you mean, it down like a guy like Barry Roberts could go in front of them and, and do that <laughs> yeah okay. but I think a good point was made I think someone made it here I think Bill. On the CPA committee, we have a lot of money there, and we can't even give money away because sometimes we don't even have a quorum. And, the, and uh, now, this is a tough to, part to, to this point there. Ten percent, minimum of ten percent, must go towards this renovation. I don't think there's anything that says it can't be more than that. Okay. Correct. Is ten percent automatically set aside for housing? Ten percent storage? Ten percent open space? Remaining seventy percent, can be you can be five, cut cut into pieces for historic, recreation, open space, or housing. So, so, so the remaining seventy percent. So, so let's say they have the the North Abbey Hall has a very good idea. But you could you could conceivably dedicate eighty percent. Okay. To housing. Okay. Which I believe is what Cambridge is doing. Would they would they bar, the borrow to do a specific project? You you CPA. Could. CPA. CPA does have ability. You guys are asking some good questions, and there are, when I, there are no ground rules there. It, it was whatever Joe was given, okay. and he ran it very ably, and then that one. And, uh, and there's, there's fortunately, state, we're state getting state some consultant with some brilliant knowledge to set some guidelines of what is allowed, what is not allowed. And you, I mean, you definitely can do, uh, you, you can do an amount equivalent to the annual principal yeah. interest. And you can borrow from it. You can borrow ahead of it. Okay. Well, okay. You know, there's, there's, no, that, this is good information. <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff here that has potential that we can utilize North Hadley Hall to our advantage that's for the better of the town and not just housing for somebody. Okay. We can actually yeah. make it worth our while for a number of things. It could be so affordable housing for seniors. I mean, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. When we had our, our, remember back, we had a meeting in the village there with the people. They overwhelmingly supported to put, they would like to see over 55 housing. Yeah, but that's well, that's that. yeah when, when they were, when they, when the, when the ZBA was doing the variance for the uh, studio apartments, senior housing was absolutely what the people in the neighborhood would love. Yeah. But that was what was being proposed. Oh, yeah. The Affordable Housing Trust might solve the conundrum of what to do with North Alley Hall. You already see that potential. A real, it's got a real potential. That is true. I mean, and it's something you could focus on. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's not. No, and this is true. Nothing says that we couldn't put the housing trust in and do one project. That's a good point. And so we And act. then, <coughs> not have it anymore. Yeah. Okay. From yeah, that point, you got no, you got no control of that trust committee. Uh, wait, a minute, right. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. <coughs> We put the, we leave the affordable trust in the wording. We do the affordable trust. We do one project, North Hadley Hall. We spend the money, and then we get rid of the affordable trust. You know that? No, you're not on that trust committee. You, no. Once once that's established by the selectmen. I'm just yeah. telling I, you I this there's right a now. lot of groundwork and a lot of pieces to fit into the puzzle relative to the uh, North yeah. Atlanta. But, but I think town meeting could still vote. The town the meeting could still vote. De-establish the to de to, 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 to de yeah. the trust, and they could vote to de it and we get yeah. rid of it out of the zoning bylaw. But if it's not there, yeah. it's not there. Oh, well. What I'm thinking is we, we might, do we need it to do one project? If we do, 
Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Yeah. We need a lot more information on the CPA. You need a lot more information on that project because there's a lot of pieces that are going to have to fall into place. A lot of stars are going to have to line up. Yeah. I, I, I personally down. don't think we need it yeah. to do that project from Barry Robert's point of view. Yeah. Right. Because if he, he has the option already of doing it off site. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think that necessarily, I, I agree with you on that. I don't what, think what, right. what we need to find out is what are the limits on the CPA right. for them to help contribute a little bit, maybe towards an elevator. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because well, I'm, not, well, I'm not sure that it would be that specific that you have to spend $100,000 on the elevator. Or just like how we've done it where it's, it is $100,000 a project. And uh, we did a number of uh, using CPA money and a number of affordable That would be, a lot of affordable that would be easier. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's easier to sell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up, and, and, and again, when we, the way we used it in Westfield was it for gap financing. Uh, they were able to uh, come together other funding sources and they were short this much. And so they would come in and ask for this much money to make the project full. Yeah. Um, but there, it was you know uh, a, a nonprofit, not for profit that we were, we were working with. So what I like about the affordable housing trust is that it gives us control. Right now, having the developer put a building in gives us a building wherever the developer chooses to put it, and so now we have a we have a possibility of an affordable unit on Chattuck Road. Uh, maybe that's not where we want affordable units. Maybe we want affordable units closer to public transportation. But the housing trust won't prevent him from coming in and applying to do that project. Well, I'm not talking, I'm talking about if, if we are just doing a development of lots, yeah. as opposed to payment in lieu, yeah. no housing trust, yeah. we get something where the developer chooses to provide it, wherever the developer bought land yep. that's where that affordable unit is going to be. Yes. Whereas the housing trust get money in from that developer, from this developer, from two more, and pretty soon you got a million dollars that you can the town can use where it wants to use it in conjunction with C D money. Is it true they're gonna call it Harf Lakers? Pardon? Yeah, they do. You're missing about that. I agree with Bill and Adam and I like the idea of the housing trust from a housing trust point of view. Mm -hmm. The problem that I see is that we, that we have raised before is to put the people, the personnel, yeah. on that committee to effectively utilize it. Yeah. I'm just not sure you have the capacity to administer. That, yeah. that's what, that was my take. That's it. That's it. You know, yeah. you and, that's, and that's not to say that at some point you won't have it. Yeah. I mean, you could put the planning board in charge of the, of the trust fund in theory. Mm -hmm. However, there is so much detail involved in that thing right. that I, I, I don't think we want that. Are you kidding me? Well, you know, I, I will throw back now? and do as the plan as you had talked about it previously. Come back to the February meeting and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, I, I think that's the yes. best one. Once you've got yeah. more information on yeah. it. And, and again, you know, whatever you do at the annual town meeting, as you know, zoning is not actually bread. It's, 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 it's a long thing. It's an evergreen thing. You know, it's an evergreen thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and, okay. But a really good topic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's got a lot of twists to it. It's an interesting topic. Yeah. I don't know if I want to call it good yet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's an issue. Uh, you know, and it's an issue, uh, uh, and I think in Hadley's case, I think the inclusionary zoning requirement is, is a worthwhile one and a good one. Uh, in large part, because as you know, we talked about this with the master plan, you've got the highest uh, housing rates in the region. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and you and don't want to necessarily price out uh, a whole demographic. You know what I don't like about this whole stuff? In the state of Massachusetts, yeah. to build affordable housing, the community no longer can take care of its community. It has to take care of the whole commonwealth. Yeah. People from all over. How the hell does that work? Well, let, the, let the communities take care of their own, and they just 
But, but some communities they grew on like that. But the problem you have is that most communities aren't doing it, and so everybody's being driven to those communities. So the state too, stepped and in. So you end up with high concentrations in a few towns, a few right. communities. So the state stepped in and Spread said, out. fill wads out there. How much, how much was the uh, housing commissioner in uh, Charleston making a year? I don't know. About $450? I couldn't tell you. And then you had another state job. I couldn't tell you. No. <laughs> I'll be volunteer. So it's either the first two of the end. Well, the other thing, too, is that for, uh, you know, the fact that they can demand a certain percentage of affordability, but, you know, that only has to be, what is it, 15%, 25% of the whole project. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the... Well, the beauty right. is, again, with rental right. projects, you cut them off. That's right. That's so, right. Uh, it's a numbers game. So, so okay. we don't have to conform to that standard, though. In other words, if we do adopt something, uh, and give it to a developer, like we got fooled once upon a time by a friendly 40B. And, uh, but so if a developer comes in, so I'm going to build four apartment units in North Hadley Hall, but I don't have to go through zoning to put on another. 40, 40. Yeah. Yeah. They, they can do that? Or, I mean, could they do that under our rules and regulations? No, so we would have a request for proposals that would say, give us four affordable units in North Heavy Hall. Make it 100% affordable. Okay. Um, because we we can, we can have that leverage because we're, we have the <laughs> facility and we have seed money and we can ask for them all to be affordable. That really is a dynamite project for the town. Yeah. It also really depends on the rental or ownership. Yeah, that has a huge. That would probably be one to be rented. <laughs> well, but then rental, you've got to be able to factor in. You have the continuing funding source to continue the uh, subsidized rents to administer it. Um, it's probably it's not going to break even. If a if a private person runs it, there'll be no problem. If the town runs it, there's I, always I, there be a problem. But there may be something to that. No, no, but I, Johnny, just I, I mentioned this before. Sutherland tried something like that, uh, yeah. but all of a sudden, we'll say North Abbey Hall. He said, "Look, it's not affordable. Well, right. Just, just four units. We want to build 14 units, yeah. and we make a bigger building." And that's what happened in Sutherland. Who ran it? That was and, and that, that's that's where, the town ran it. The town ran it. And that's where a trillion numbers came. Uh, including putting an elevator into that hall. That's whether you have enough units to make it cost effective to invest in putting an elevator. To justify the cost. Yeah, it's uh, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. See you in two months. Have a good Christmas. Very good. All right. Okay. See you later. Bring your bigger jacket next time you go. I'll have my winter coat next. Well, there you go, and your unsolicited underwear. Yeah. Give more information. Oh, do we want to talk about the attached accessory apartments at all? No. Uh, yeah, why not? Who, who, who don't want to talk about it? Talk, okay, we'll talk about it. I certainly want to see something change that the attached part comes detached. From what? The, the so it doesn't have to be attached to a building. Okay. Which so if somebody does... Now, will this be... Uh, can, can I build a new uh, apartment? Why not? You build, bring a, in a, you build a new. You, no, no, not a trailer. That's the point. What's what's the thing? Trailer. So it would have to be okay. Fixed. So we had a, I had a call from um, the guy who we did a solar installation. The farmer of Rocky Hill Road. Well, they have stone meadow, stone meadow, stone soup, anyway, stone soup, or stone soup farm. Um, small house. No, no functional expansion capacity for the existing structure because of where it lies related relative to the property line. They wanted to put a detached accessory apartment, kind of like putting up a uh, detached garage across the driveway right. for their parents, or for anybody for that matter. Yeah. But would it need a new septic system? Yes. Well, it's going to pass Title Five. That's all. Yeah. So uh, that there, thing with there, there is interest. You re remember well, back well, at the beginning of the, in fact, attached garage, someone came in 
the year we adopted the accessory apartment and wanted to, to convert a detached garage into an accessory apartment. I don't, I mean, you're, you're giving some anecdotal information, but we had our master plan. There was not a groundswell of popular opinion in the questionnaire about having new more, more apartments. Uh, certainly it's for open space preservation. So we're coming up with something that really was not on the master plan just because we think that out of the sky. What's, what's the advantage of using, well, of having a detached apartment? Of what? What's, have, what's the advantage to the town of allowing detached apartments? Uh, for instance, <coughs> take a existing garage that's not attached. Okay. People are looking <coughs> for extra income to live in this town. Where, where does someone over 60 years old that doesn't have a job can get extra funding so they could live the rest of their life in this town? Well, or their kids, their grandkids could so come in. All right? Some people are fortunate, they got plenty of money, they don't have to worry about it. So having a detached accessory apartment where there is currently a detached garage or nothing would enhance the tax rate. Exactly. There would be there would be value to putting up and I, I suspect we're going to see it more in conversion. I, I, I doubt anyone is going to find it worthwhile, cost effective to build a nine hundred square foot building. Oh, I don't I disagree with that. But I, 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 I think somebody could bring in a trailer. Take well, a we're not talking, what the hell are you talking about trailers? We're not well, talking about trailers. You, you, you're talking it's new construction? On, new construction or reconstructed on a foundation, not a trailer. Well, like, Why the hell are you bringing up trailers? Because you can get across, you get around that bylaw by bringing a trailer, take the wheels off and put it on. No, yes, no. Yes, we're you not can. talking about a trailer. Legally, that is allowed. A constructed Legally, that is allowed. It is not called a trailer. It's called a prefabricated house. So when you take the wheels off, that's what it is. And so it's allowed in, well, I'll work it. I don't think it meets the same state spec. Well, I, think, I think you just can't say we want to do this. What you want to say is how, how do you keep your building new? Does it have to be an existing facility? How big can it be? You're doing the same thing and with how us? big should the lot be? Right now, Joe, you're doing the same thing with an accessory apartment. What the hell is the difference if it's attached or detached? It still meets Title V inspection. If they're sewer, there's no question. And it still it has to pass Title V. If you're going to make an improvement to your septic system for an extra bedroom or two bedroom, then so be it, and it can be done on it. That's done with an engineer and plans for that. I can't understand what's so. What's the sticking point of attached and detached? I think it needs to be investigated to see if what Joe said about taking a trailer and calling it a prefabricated home. Is. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that. Okay. Well, that's. Yeah, but, they're but that could be spelled out. If, if that that could be spelled out by not allowing new construction. That could be addressed with that, but that would defeat a little bit of the purpose. But they're, I, I'm, I don't have a strong, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. But I'm kind of open on this one to see reason of why we should allow so it. Are you saying you can have prefabricated for the first housing on the lot, but not the second second house? Because there's many houses in Abbey that we could have. You cannot say that legally. No, I didn't think so. No. But you, you, you need to define somehow. Well, then what's the difference with our accessories? They come with a prefab and attach it to the house. Well, Johnny, this, this as you remember, during the, uh, during the town meeting when we were talking about accessory apartments, it was very controversial. It passed by one vote. Mm -hmm. And and the only reason it, it became uh, kind of doable and it passed the town meeting, I think you were on that committee or was Jim? Me. You were, I mean, 
you guys worked a lot. You brought a committee together of a lot of people, pros and cons, and you, you came up with something that you thought could pass the town meeting. If it doesn't pass, you still get an assessment for your private. You still get that intact. That's correct. Why do, we need, why do we need more? Do we need more students? I'm, I'm not talking about we need more. It's the same thing, but it's not attached. It gives the, the landowner or homeowner more options on their property. Well, you know, the and neighbors, also the neighbors gives, may not like. Uh, well, let them complain. There, that's what there's we have no, public hearings. Well, yeah, right. I, I, there's I'm no like, neighbors that, that are complaining about what we do now with the century. Usually, usually it's too late after you've passed the town meeting. You know, you don't want Route 9 to be business. People complain about it all the time. But once it passed the town I'm meeting... I'm worried about elderly people being... Uh, able to keep on with the taxes rising and everything, and they have no new place to get income, there's an opportunity that if they have an existing place, they can convert it into a to a housing unit. They could downsize. Kids could live in the, in the house or whatever. Apparently, tenants' rights are some of the strictest in the country in Massachusetts. I'm not sure an elderly person wants to get involved in uh, becoming a landlord. Well, well, the, the, the problem is both the accessory apartments were seen are not elderly people. No, exactly. No, but but exactly. Most, most of the accessory apartment people of applications we've seen, very few have been from elderly couples. Yeah, but, the, no, but the, makes, there, there have been cases that the, their kids move in and live with the parents in a accessory couple, apartment. A couple, most of or, they, or they'll switch. Most of the accessory apartments that have come into us have been, I would say, people in far less than senior citizens just looking for extra money on their house. Uh, and I, you can guarantee that there's going to be some developers are going to come in and they're going to put some on every house they own like i don't want to mention any names this person that has a lot of rental units in the town of Hadley, he'll just be put some more right around we, we, just need, we, we, need, we need to look at this yes, yes not one of the units has to be over occupied <laughs> we need to look at this carefully and but you have that that's right the owner occupied we, we, we need we need to look at this a little bit carefully yes. especially about did the grandparents pass away? Especially the prefabricated housing idea. The prefabricated. You building. can't stop it because right now they can come in with a prefab to put it on accessory. Attach it right to the house. What are you talking about? A, a, a true prefabricated home is one thing. As long as it meets the code, you can't stop it. That's right. A true prefabricated home is not a problem. A trailer, if you take the wheels off of it and call it a prefabricated home, is a different item. And we need to review that with the building inspector to, building see, to, see what that, right. to see what that is determined. Right. So okay. I'll, I'll give an example that um, we have a couple of detached farms on our property. And I am in no way looking to convert them to accessory apartments. We have enough space. but. Um, underutilized, structurally sound, detached building. Uh, I'm not going to use it for farming again. No one, it's not suitable for farming, but could be a, converted into a very nice accessory apartment. Um, Mike it, uh, has a nicely rebuilt barn behind, well, you're, it's not owner occupied, so that wouldn't qualify, but um, you had a barn burned down, you built a new one there, um, you're not actively farming as much. Um, you know, that's the kind of building that could be usefully converted to, uh, to housing. And in locations where you know, no one's going to complain. So that's, that's one of the functions of the fact that we have 80% of the town in the agricultural residential zoning district, regardless of whether the houses are 200 feet apart or 2,000 feet apart. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm, I like the idea of, I don't like to rule out detached. We've, we did not support accessory apartments when it was first brought up. Um, <clears throat> but 
with one exception that was withdrawn, uh, I don't think <coughs> I've not heard any complaints about any of them. How many have you gave permits for accessory purposes uh, <coughs> since his bylaws oh, went into existence? 20, I'm going to say 20 to 30. Yeah, 20 30. In that range, in that range. How many complaints did you have? That that's 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 well, the, well, of the ones we approved, none. Will, will the accessory apartment be able to be owned by someone besides the people living? No, Bill is or occupied. Or occupied on the property. Well, so just you know, with like, like Jimmy said, you got to think in the future. How this population is growing. When I've heard, people want cluster housing. It's not hasn't passed yet. This allows a form of cluster housing, but it's more diffuse. But this is an exception to the one dwelling per lot rule. Right. And yeah. So people, no, it wouldn't be separately. It wouldn't be separately sellable. Yeah. No, because people yeah. don't want cluster housing. No, Developers no, want cluster know, housing. They have to make a lot more what money, money and throw the burden on the town. What's the, what's the population right now? Now the forty five thousand, fifty two hundred. Where's it going to be in twenty years? Mm -hmm. Or is it going to be in 20 years? If you tell yeah, me well, what's going to happen to yeah, the yeah, university, it's going to be 10,000? The, 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 the population of Hazy in 20 years depends a lot on this board right here. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you, can only so many, you can only put so many new houses in the Wild West, okay? Well, it's a good place for houses because you can't yeah. farm there. Well, <laughs> you look at people taking up land, you know, there's there's a problem with housing in Hadley because of the five colleges. Yeah. They take up every single unit they can get their hands on. Yeah. All right, do you want housing to take up the rest of the land that's in Hadley that's not in the APR? Because mm -hmm. that's, and I'll tell you, you watch what's, what's going on, what I hear, the select board are in favor of a split tax rate. When when everything hits the fan, the farmers that have land that's not under APR and they're, they're according to DOR, a business, they're going to be looking to sell that land. Well, wait, 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 wait. Leave, leave the tax rate alone. We're not talking about that right now. I know that. But let's talk about... But it all, all affects the housing. We're, we're, we're strictly talking about the, the original item on the top about the split tax rate. So leave that alone. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to do poll of Hadley residents and just ask them the question. What? You'll do a thing at the town meeting. Town meeting, you'll find it. You find it at town right. meeting. They want it, they go for it. They don't. Yeah. They vote against it. Doesn't. So, yeah. So we need to find a little more information on, on, on the detachment. What qualifies for detachment? You know. I'll talk to Tim. All right. Enough on that. Um, Split tax rate, that's coming up to the Board of Selectors, so I think we should at least, I, I think we should take a stand on it because it's important. Mm -hmm. I mentioned this before, a split tax rate at a tax, tax at a selectors meeting, I said it once before, I believe three years ago, um, I am absolutely against the split tax rate. All a split tax rate does is artificially deflate the tax rate for a homeowner temporarily. Yeah. If you deflate the tax rate for the homeowner and inflate it for the business, you now made the businesses a lot less attractive to come into Hadley. A lower tax rate on residential is going to stay low for a few years, but you're going to drop the taxes so much, it's now going to be extremely attractive to build residences in Hadley. You're, you probably would see an influx of subdivisions over several years to the point that in I don't know, I'll just throw a number out there. In 10 years, you'll be looking to expand a lot of services, schools, police, fire, and you're gonna be right back where you are now in probably far less shape because you're gonna, the farmers are gonna be paying a higher tax rate, to John's point, and they're gonna to have to sell a property to be able to afford to farm or just get out of farming and those that can, can sell are going to skedaddle and it's all going to be houses and you're going to be in deep deep doo-doo it, it is absolutely the worst thing you could do for the whole they got a split tax right springfield or yeah. who, who, who else springfield. springfield springfield i didn't know that springfield. yeah but look, look, no no springfield does it <coughs> i think it was springfield isn't it 
One of them. We should have just voted. And uh, Greenfield just voted it. They did? The, uh, the mayor vetoed it, and I guess they're supposed to be overriding his veto. Okay. Because I think they have the votes to do it on the yeah. council. I, I think <coughs> this is one we need more information. I've heard that they're going to, there are farmers' exemptions. There are exemptions for small business. There are exemptions. So basically, they want to tuck it to the, the big yeah. box stores. Yeah, it's, okay, it's let's just say. Well, not necessarily the big box stores. Any, okay, okay, let's let's just any business. You, any you, business. You take the big box stores, you've got to tuck it to them. What's going to happen? You know damn well they're going to sue because they're going to say, look, Amazon is taking all our business. It's not worth what it was. We're going to demand a lower assessment. So you're going to be ended up in legal fees. That so we already have done that with the assessors. And it went to the appellate court, and the appellate court sided with the petitioners. Of course. So that's been done already. Well, no, so, they're going to do it again. Well, let them do it. They'll see what's going to happen. Well, it, they may be justified now. But the towns, but the, I think before we, if we, before we take a final formal vote, we should find out the facts. What's going to be exempt? What isn't going to be exempt? I mean, right now we're we're kind of guessing. I think but as a matter of principle, we should be against it. The, but it, but exactly. we, don't want, we don't want exemption. As a matter of principle, even, we should be against even if the it. farmers are exempt, the fact is you're going to artificially deflate the tax rate for residents to make it extremely attractive for residences to build and to move into Hadley and over a. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Just I, for I, that I, one, I what you just that. said, that one thing, if it just affected that one thing, do you want that? Yeah. You're going to see more residences. You're going to see more houses. More no, All more, right. Then more. that's why we should stand to say we want a single tax rate. Yeah. Because you're going to see more residences, even if the farmers are exempt. Let's assume they are. <laughs> businesses are not going to be as attractive to move in. Um, residents are going to be are going to be attractive to move in. You're going to see, you could see over some very reasonable short time more subdivisions because it's going to be so inexpensive to to, to pay your taxes in town, and your schools are going to be burdened, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just it's it, just not a good it'll be thing. become a high demand for Alton and Hadley. Yep. High demand. You're going to see the fuel fee. You're going to see the few subdivisions that have building lots available right now sucked up probably pretty quick, and a lot more coming down the road. But there's a lot of land available that can be built into subdivisions. I know. In got the, I think there's 24,000 acres in Hadley. You've only got about 5,000 preserved, right? In APR, if that. Right? Is it that much? I don't know. I don't think it's that much. But let's say there's 5,000. Let's say there's 10,000 developments. There was a, the the Pioneer Pine Planning Commission did a study. A development constraints plan. We yeah. have it. Yeah. There. That Hadley could see, if it was, Hadley was built out, you could see a population of around 20,000 in Hadley, 25,000. Right now, considering we're at 5,000, whoa. Look what look what happened in Belchytown with housing. Look yeah. what happened. Oh yeah, they built high, they built two high schools in the last thirty it, years. It went absolutely crazy over there. That's because they did not. They're the only community around that did not have a cap on housing developments per year. We had a cap. We probably have to put the cap back on. But well, you wouldn't be able to put a cap on. We already, we already know that's sometimes. Just true. in principle, yeah. I really believe there's not a person sitting on this board that would support a split tax rate. No one will be known. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> the hearing is tomorrow night. Uh, you, want to, you want to get a letter, email to the uh, select board? So we're, we're going to have a vote. I will take. I will take a vote. Well, I, but, I'd like to make a motion. I, yeah, I just wanted to emphasize that there is time pressure here. Yeah, and how, what, what we before we take a vote, <laughs> you know, if we, don't, we don't really have time to have a committee develop a letter. Right. So I just want to before we take a vote, I want to know how we how we see getting from the vote to an, an email to the board of select that I think is the most appropriate. I'm the Darren Antrick is that. That will agree on tomorrow's paper. Or tomorrow morning's paper. Yeah. One 
wrapped up now, Peter? Um, yeah, if it, I can, I can run something. Basically, I think you had it all here. That <laughs> artificially deflates, artificially inflates, makes residential development more likely. It's increasing more pressure. So therefore, as a matter of economic principle, we're against it. No, we aren't taking economic principle. We're talking the interests of the town ahead, right? Yes. He's talking artificially increasing demand. That's that's economics. So you just need to have a reason that is in our wheelhouse, as they say. Yes. Just because we like it or don't like it individually is not a, a good reason to take uh, a position. I certainly, support. I certainly support business that business made this town really affordable and what this could do to the future of this town for its population, for its, <coughs> the businesses disappearing, coming in for rebates, for taxes, which they have done once the buildings go idle. Okay, well, so that's, there, there has been little or no study, as far as I'm aware, of potential adverse impact on business. So, okay. Well, everybody knows what's going on with Amazon.com and, and everything on the internet. Okay, so you go Everywhere. Ahead. Want to make a motion, John? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that this board strongly opposes a split tax rate in the town of Hathi for these various reasons. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No one's opposed. Motion passes unanimously. You'll put that quickly together. Bill? Yeah. Okay. Um, I will. Uh, I will email something to you tomorrow. Okay. Just so the another set of eyes. I'll, okay. I'll send it around to everybody, but I won't worry about getting a response from everybody. I will just send it for information. For information, but um, if uh, I, I don't want to be sure, I'm, I'm working off of basically. Jim's statement, so I want yeah, to be well, that's sure. Fine. Okay. It's fine. General information right now, there's a finance committee meeting. I'm sorry, not finance. The department head meeting at 6 o'clock. Yeah, that's 6 o'clock. On December 6th at 11 a.m. in a town hall, room 203, usual monthly department head meeting. And we've got a request. Since it's not on the agenda, I don't want to discuss it. The bill put a bill to put it on for our next meeting um, to discuss. Uh, to fiscal year 2019 budgets. Here's a copy for everybody to look at what our budget is. And I think come back at our next meeting so that we can uh, talk about it. And what we'd like to see. Not that we'll get it, but at least we can talk about it. This is for the next meeting? Yes. I also want to put on, um, just to, for discussion, uh, <clears throat> There is an all boards meeting that is being scheduled for January. Okay. And that's why they canceled for the one in December? Yes. Okay. And uh, both Molly Keegan and uh, David Nixon have indicated that they would like the planning board to have a little, say a few extra words about the master plan. Okay. No problem. So we can. Uh, I'll just put that on to the next agenda, okay. too. Does this talk about the budget? Uh, is that primarily what it's for? The master plan? No. The, uh, the all boards okay. meeting. Well, it, it's a little unclear. I think they're going to get out a... Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if it's talking about the budget or talking about generic department needs. Uh, I believe that they are going to get out some sort of... Uh, agenda or guide, guidelines on what we are going to be talking about. Otherwise, it'll just turn into a free-for-all. You're absolutely right. That was my question. Yeah. Well, that's all those meetings are, right? I think we should I think we want to contact someone about getting heat in here during the winter. No. Yeah. I want to find out where we're going to go when they demolish the building. <laughs> Never mind the heat. I put that letter out today to the uh, select board. Good job. Well, say yeah, the, the one also, on last time. And also, you write it there is it going to be a heated building <laughs> and air conditioning? <laughs> I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Maybe we can, in our budget, put in for snowmobile. <laughs> 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 huh? We'll, we'll find Yeah.
I'll I'll just just John, John, with John, Boy. John, John needs one too. Right, and one for the one for, one for TV5. Right. <laughs> Snowmobile suits. Move we adjourn. Second. With, all, with, all in favor? With all right. Matching, with matching gloves. Thank you and thank you, John. Well, don't forget matching gloves with that suit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.